Savior Jesus Christ, and we are so grateful for him allowing us to come before you today. We ask that, that God's blessings, God's power, God's strength be 
uh, felt in this place on this day. We ask that uh, you uh, just bear with us a little while and we're going to try to uh, bring forth a, a, a word that is a, a life-giving word today as we go forward. Uh, uh, first of all, let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this another day. We thank you, God, for all that you're doing, Lord, and we just thank you for allowing us just to come before you one more time. Lord, we ask that you uh, use this moment to, to help to amplify your word throughout the world, God. We ask you to touch and to anoint and to make people better, Lord, just by listening to your word. And God, it's all about you. We, you are uh, the head of our lives, and we thank you for it. We thank you for all those who are participating and helping us with this production, Lord. And we just thank you for our church and our church family. And we ask, we ask that you be with us, Lord, and to keep us and strengthen us and encourage us. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 Before I get started with the word, I did want to remind all of you Eskridge Grovians that we are, uh, are currently uh, uh, meeting for prayer on the call line uh, each Saturday morning at 11 o'clock. I want to ask you to make it a priority for you to be there. Because uh, I think as a church, we know that, that prayer changes things. That uh, it makes a difference when you pray. And he says, when two or three of us gather together in his name, there he'll be in the midst. So we ask you to come on, let's be in the midst of Jesus on Saturday morning. Don't forget about Wednesday evenings. Wednesday evenings, we will, uh, uh, Lord willing, we will be having Sunday school lesson on Wednesday night. Amen. And we are thankful that God has been blessing us. And we just ask you to be, we'll, we'll be live on Facebook. We'll be uh, live on the conference call line. And so that everybody that wants to get that word can get it out. If you don't have a book, you need to uh, let us know that we can get you a book. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, the other thing, I wanted to make sure that we know that on the, we the when the weather is inclement, or uh, when it's too cold, or when it's raining, or whatever, we will not be at the at the uh, outdoor site. But if weather permits, that's where we'll be on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. So keep that in mind. If we're not there, we will be online, we'll be on Facebook, we'll be on YouTube, and we will be uh, also uh, on the conference line. And so look forward to that. I'm sure that there are some things that I am forgetting. We'll text um, websites too. And we will also be texting all the websites and all the contact information to, uh, the very, to each one of you so that we can uh, uh, get the word out. Amen? Amen. All right, all right. Y'all ready for the word, I guess, I hope. And I uh, don't hope to be before you too long today. And I don't know, we may split this up into one and two, but uh, we'll deal with that later. But I wanted us to talk about our priorities. What are our Priorities. What's your priorities as an individual, first of all? And then secondly, I would like to, to ask the question, what are our priorities for the church? As I think about it a little deeper, I, I just need for us to realize what's most important to us. I was reading the book of Mark, the 8th chapter, the 34th verse, and it said, When he had called the people to himself and his disciples also, he said to them, Whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the Gospels will save it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will it a man give 
in exchange for his soul. Let us pray. Father, we thank you now. We ask you, God, to just uh, touch and anoint, Lord. And we ask you right now to just let this word permeate our hearts and our minds, God, that we be better, that we be stronger, and that we be more in your likeness. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The question today is, where are your priorities? In other words, what is most important to you? What, in other words, what I'm trying to say, what is more urgent in your life? Where are your priorities? In the passage of scripture that, that, that we read from, Jesus is speaking and Jesus is speaking to a multitude of people and in, those, uh, in that multitude was the 12 disciples, Peter, James, John, Matthew, Thomas, Philip, Simon, Andrew, Bartholomew, Nathaniel, James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, and his betrayer, Judas Iscariot. As he often did, Jesus gives us a lesson on priorities. As he often did, Jesus underscored in his teaching the foremost oblig obligations of being his disciple. I hope that we got some disciples in the audience today. Uh, there are uh, 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 some things that we need to realize that we are his disciple. Well, we should, uh, uh, first of all, we should have self denial, self surrender, self sacrifice. And then we should have a kingdom pursuit. Concerning self-denial, we quote the words of John the Baptist about Jesus. He said, he must increase, we must decrease. Self-surrender. We must submit ourselves to the kingdom's authority. In other words, we want to do what God has said to do. Thirdly, uh, concerning self-sacrifice, we must be willing to suffer for the sake of Jesus and that of the gospel. Mark 8 and 35 says, For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. For whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. And also, kingdom pursuit. Jesus tells us in Matthew 6 and 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. What things? All these things. What things? What, what, what things will he add? All the things that you and I pursue in life, all the things that we have been pursuing before the kingdom of God. So the question is, what's more important? The focus of our text is following Jesus. Following Jesus necessitates choosing Jesus above all else. Following Jesus entails placing Jesus before all others, including, according to Jesus himself, your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your spouse, your children, yourself. Yourself. Following Jesus is making Jesus the Lord of our lives. Following Jesus is giving Jesus the, uh, the optimum part of our Give him the best part of your life. Don't give him the residue. Don't give him the leftovers. But give him the first fruits. With Jesus' kingdom agenda must be preeminent within our lives. With Jesus, we cannot divide our allegiance between the kingdoms of the world and the kingdoms of God. With Jesus, we must pick a side and not straddle the fence. With Jesus, we cannot serve two masters, God and mammon, God and wealth. The question is, what is your priority? Is it gold or is it God? The question is, where are our priorities? The, uh, the accumulation of things or our service to humanity? What is the question of where is our priority? Is, is it much? Is it how much we have or is it how much we can give away? The question is, where is our priority? 
Is it material interest or spiritual investment? The Bible teaches the emphasis on spiritual investment. Jesus said, lay not up for yourself treasures upon the earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. The Bible says, if then, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. First John 2 and 15 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not here in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it is <clears throat> but but is of the world, and the world passes away, and, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of the Father abides forever. Jesus says life is more than just food and, and the body more than just clothing. We are advised to put more value on our relationship with God more than anything else. We are advised to consider what matters most in life. The eternal reward of heaven, the eternal, the temporal pleasures of the world. What matters most? What do you really want? The psalmist says, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. There's nothing in this world more precious than our eternal life. Nothing more important than our immortal souls. We should not bargain away our heavenly destiny for an earthly dime or dollar. In other words, none of us should compromise or concede the privileges of salvation obtained at the cross of Calvary through the blood of Jesus for the indulgences of the extravagances of this world. Jesus said, what will it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Here Jesus employs an illustration from the world of, world of commerce. In the world of commerce, profit and loss are the concern of all who engage in buying and selling, investing for dividends. People don't invest with the objective of losing their money. In the world of commerce, it does not make sense to gain much only to lose even more. But how much more foolish is it, is, is it for any of us to trade away our soul and heaven for a reservation in hell? Mm. Mm. Why come to church every Sunday? Why sing in the choir? Why pay your tithes? Why every Sunday you're here? Only to miss out on heaven. <laughs> the question is, what is your priority? Too many of us are living a life as if the world is all there is. Too many of us are living a life uh, as, as if judgment day is never going to come. I'm here to tell you, judgment day is real. The Bible teaches us that after death comes judgment. The Bible teaches us that after that heaven is a literal place and so is hell. Hell is a place of everlasting punishment. Hell is a place of everlasting fire. Hell is a place of eternal damnation. Hell is a place of outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. And it is where the souls go who choose the world rather than Christ. It's where, it is where souls go who have given themselves over in this world to the works of the devil without repentance. What is your priority? Is it pleasing people or pleasing God? God. Amen. Where's your priority? Is it fulfilling the will of God or gratifying the will of the flesh? Where's your priority? 
Is it living a righteous life or living a wicked life? Where's your priority? Is it gaining by losing or losing by gaining? Remember the last shall be first and the first shall be last. Remember greatness in God's kingdom is gauged by servanthood here on earth. Everything attached to this life has an expiration date. I remember my mama told me. She said I wasn't built to last forever. Mm -hmm. In other words, this body that you got has an expiration date. And remember this, this is only what you do for Christ that will last. Fame is only temporary. Mm. Fortune is only temporary. Beauty fades, and life as we know it today will come to an end. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 teaches to everything there's a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. James 4 and 14 warns us for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. So, we understand. Now, it's all right to have things. Understand that it's all right to have money. Understand it's all right to live well. So we understand it's all right to embrace and enjoy life. But we should not do so in the ex uh, uh, at the expense of idolatry. Amen. We should not uh, do it with the expense of our spiritual adultery. We should not do so at the expense of selling our soul. Amen. We should not do so at the expense of forfeiting eternal life. I'm up here to tell you, church, listen, nothing is worth it. Nobody is more important. Not our parents, not our children, not our spouse, not our boo, not our job, not our career, not our siblings, or our friends. Mm. Think about it. What is more important than your salvation? What is more important than your redemption? Think about it. What is more important than heaven? What's more important than eternal life? What's more important than your name being written in the Lamb's book of life and staying there? What's more important than hearing the Lord say one day, servant, well done? What's more important than experiencing God's grace and His mercy? Is there anything more important than to know that it is well with your soul. Mm. I'm here to tell you that nothing is more important. Nothing is, has greater value. There's nothing more important than our relationship with God. There's nothing more important than the value that's being forgiven, uh, being forgiven of your sins. Search the world. You won't find it. Search the world. Nobody can do for you what God did for you and what he does for you. The Bible says, now unto him who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all things that we ask or think. What's more important? There's nobody like the Lord. What's more important? His love for us has no match. The reckoning is for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Romans 5 and 8 says, But God commended his love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I said it before, and I'll say it again. It's all right to have things. It's all right to have money. It's all right to leave, live well. And it's all right to embrace and enjoy life. But more so than having things, we should love God as God loves us. But more so than having money, we should be a good Samaritan. But more so than living well, we should walk in the light of Jesus. More so than embracing the enjoying life, we should be a life of, of loving the Lord. Amen. Esther Grove, what's your priority? Do we clothe the naked? Esther's Grove, where's your priority? 
Do we feed the hungry? Where extra grow? What is your priority? Do we house the homeless? Do we visit the sick? Do we seek the lost? Do we uplift the downtrodden? What is our priority? Do we ever lend a helping hand? Where's your priority? It is more blessed to give than to receive. Where's your priority? God blesses us to be a blessing. This is what life is all about. This is what a follower of Christ should do. Philippians 2 and 5 says, Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. 1 John 2 and 6 says, If we abide in him, we should walk as he walked. Jesus loved people. Jesus helped people. Jesus served people. Jesus encouraged people. And he gave his life for you and I. He sacrificed for us. He was wounded for us. He was bruised for us. He was chastised for us. For us, the Son of God became the Lamb of God. For us, Jesus suffered in our place. What's more important, I hear the songwriter say, gain the world, but give me Jesus. The songwriter said, you can have this whole world, but I'll take Jesus for mine. What is it profit any of us to gain the world and lose our soul? And what and, and can any of us get what can we give in exchange for our soul? What's more important? Well, Haley Jackson says, if I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with word of song, if I can show somebody that they're traveling wrong, then my living shall not be in vain. Charles West is saying, a charge I keep, I have, a charge to keep, I have, a God so glorify, a never dying soul to save and fit it in the sky. To preserve the present age, my calling is fulfilled. Oh, may it all my powers engage to do my master's will. What's your priority? Church, the way up is down. What's more important? Is it living in God's will? What's more important? Is it serving in this present age? Is seeking God's kingdom? Nothing is more important, so let nothing be more important. Christ said, deny self, take up cross, and follow Jesus. He said, deny self, take up your cross, and follow Jesus. Deny self, take up your cross, and follow Jesus. As you grow, take up your cross, and follow Jesus. Like Paul, press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. It's the cross before us, the world behind us. No turning back. No turning back. No turning back. Job said, I know that my Redeemer lives, and he should stand at the last day upon the earth. And tell somebody what's more important. Ask somebody, is it Jesus or is it heaven? Is it eternal life or is it the will of God? Paul said, Lord, we thank you for all the blessings and all the people. And God, we pray that your word go out and that it's planted in good soil. And it brings forth an abundant blessing. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Before we leave, I did want to ask you uh, to, to remember that we can give on Cash App, cash app. Dollar, we can sign. dollar Sign, Grove, 634. Grove. Dollar Sign at Grove 634 on the Cash App. Please don't forget about us. And don't forget that we will have somebody available to receive Wednesday. on Wednesdays at 5.30 and on Saturdays at 11.30. God bless you. God keep you. Be with us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're dealing with circumstances that are going around. Some it should affect the way I treat somebody. So, so God is real. Hell is real. Heaven is real. Eternity is real. My soul is real. There will be an eternal fire that's real. And, and, 
And remember this, that, that there's an eternal...